Today I will teach you the practical physiology of concussion. Understanding this can help guide management and treatment, focusing on the underlying mechanisms behind symptoms of concussion during the recovery period. Where did that ball come from? Looks like I got a concussion. Oh perfect, let's explore the pathophysiology of concussion looking inside my head. A concussion disrupts many neurons causing stretching and sharing of the axons which leads to an overall energy crisis of the brain. Immediately after initial mechanical trauma to the brain, disruption of the neuronal cell membrane and axonal stretch initiate a complex cascade of neurochemical and neurometabolic events. These events begin with a disruption of neural cell membranes and axonal stretching. Activity at the cellular level is disrupted, leading to an efflux of intercellular potassium ions and an influx of calcium ions causing neuronal depolarization. Additionally, N-methyl D-aspartate receptor binding by glutamate opens potassium-calcium ion channels allowing unrestricted flow of these ions outward in, respectively. The intracellular accumulation of calcium ions causes additional cellular damage through activation of proteases, reactive oxygen species, and mitochondrial impairment. This period of excitation is followed by neuronal depression throughout diffuse brain area. The ionic flux eventually leads to a metabolic mismatch in the acute period as the mitochondria attempts to increase the production of ATP to meet the metabolic demands of the cell. The cell struggles to restore the ionic balance through activation of the ATP-dependent sodium potassium pump. Trying to meet the energy demands, the cell activates glycolysis producing lactate as a byproduct which continues to accumulate leading to acidosis with eventual breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Oxidative stress also contributes to the persistence of mitochondrial dysfunction after traumatic brain injury. The result is global reduction in glycolysis. These systems work over time to restore normal brain glucose utilization. There is a decrease in blood flow to the brain. However, blood flow is vital to transport much needed glucose to the injured cells. This results in an energy crisis where the body needs more glucose but reduced cerebral blood flow prevents its delivery. After initial period of hyperglycolysis and metabolic mismatch, glucose metabolic rates go into a state of impaired metabolism that can last 7-10 to 10 days in adult animals. Local cerebral metabolic rates for glucose are increased within the first 30 minutes up to 30-46% to above control levels. After 6 hours, there is a relative glucose hypometabolism that can last up to 5 days. Microtubule disruption due to axonal stretch can interfere with bidirectional axonal transport, potentially isolating the synapse, diminishing normal neurotransmission, and in severe cases, resulting in axonal disconnection. Changes in inflammatory markers have been well reported in more severe traumatic brain injury for some time. In both adults and immature rats, microarray studies report extensive upregulation of cytokine and inflammatory genes after traumatic brain injury. Models of mild traumatic brain injuries have generally shown little cell death, even in settings where measurable cognitive impairments are described. There is a possibility that there may be longer-term structural changes, although studies looking at chronic axonal injury and or atrophy are lacking. Studies of animals and humans show that following concussive brain injury, a vulnerable period to repeat injury exists. Metabolic dysfunction can last up to 30 days after sports-related concussion and up to 45 days if a second injury occurs before the first was resolved. Another head injury during this energy crisis can lead to brain swelling and to a potentially fatal condition called second impact syndrome. With the increased evidence base from available pathophysiologic data from basic science and clinical studies, 
This can help guide concussion management and treatment focusing on the underlying mechanism of concussion symptoms during the recovery period. Thanks for watching.